you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to go to Luke uh, chapter 5, and you see on a red letter poster, Rainy did a great job. She didn't do any misspelling on this one. Great job, Rainy. Luke chapter 5, launch out into the deep. We're in a year-long series on all the red letters of Christ. These are all the words that are in the, in the gospel, the words that, that God says to us and Jesus proclaimed, the red letter words. And today I'm really excited about this because this is a fishing story. <laughs> you guys know I love fishing. And so this is one of my favorite stories we get to talk about, and it's in Luke chapter 5. And you're going to hear this phrase I'm going to use a lot today, and it's the word launch. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a launch out at the Kennedy Space Center, but it's a lot of fun. If you're ever on the beach and you get to see a launch, it is amazing, especially at night. All of a sudden, the, the lights begin to sparkle and glow. And you see this huge rocket go up in the sky and it lights the sky and you feel the rumble. There's something powerful about that word launch. Now, here's the message real quickly in a nutshell. God wants you and me to live like that rocket I talked about. He wants us to be willing every once in a while to launch. To do something that you've never done before. To do something that is like outside of your comfort zone. To do something that you didn't plan. To do something out of the ordinary. And I have found over the years that when you and I take risks, when we do something bold, when we step out of our comfort zone, when we don't allow the complacency and the comfort to, to keep us stagnant, when we step out, God always steps with us and goes with us. Amen. You never launch alone. I'm going to put some, some great quotes up on, the, up on the screen here in just a second. I want you to hear what other people say about, about launching. This guy He's really struggling financially. Mark Zuckerberg, he says this, the biggest risk is not taking any risks. In a world that is changing really quickly, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks. Vicki Hope says this, taking risks doesn't mean shrinking responsibility, but embracing possibilities. Frederick Douglass said it this way, when, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. And I love this one. Jim Rohn, if you are not willing to risk the unusual, you will have to settle for the ordinary. In Luke chapter 5, verse 1, it says, One day Jesus was, was standing by the sea. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen. And they were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from the shore. And then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep, launch out, and let your nets down for a catch. And Simon answered him, Master, we've worked hard all night, and we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Hallelujah. They signaled their partners in the other boats to come and to help them. And they came and they filled both boats so full they began to sink. When Simon saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and cried and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John and the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their nets up on the shore. They left everything 
and they followed him. What an incredible fishing story. I have fished all my life, and I have never encountered what happens here in Luke chapter 5. As a fisherman, you get the hat on, you get the right fishing shirt on, you get the pants on, you get the net, you get the pole, you get the reel, you get the boat, you get all the technology, and you work so hard to catch a fish, and you get skunked. There is nothing worse than coming home from fishing skunked. In fact, there's been a few times I did that. I stopped by Publix and picked up a couple pounds of cod just to have fish smell on me. So when I came home, I wasn't embarrassed to tell Tammy that I'd spent all this time and all this energy and all this money, and I didn't catch a thing. Can you imagine how frustrated Simon and his buddies were? They just fished all night long, and they're on the shore, and they're cleaning their nets, and they're getting ready to to go home and hopefully take a nap and rest and recover because their jobs were counting on this. And Jesus comes on the scene, and he says something to them that that is radical. It's crazy. It doesn't make sense. How many know that sometimes God is going to ask you to do things that don't make sense? They're a little crazy. They're a little unusual. So these guys are fatigued and they're tired. And Jesus simply says to them, I want you to launch back out into the deep. And Simon, his name means rock. He had to make a decision. Am I going to stay in the shallow? Am I going to stay where it's comfortable? Am I going to stand here where if I fell, I would, I would at least know that where I was falling? Or am I going to do what God tells me to do and launch out into the deep? And there's a tremendous power these days for all of us to stay in the shallow, to play it safe. Don't take any risks. You've worked hard. All night. And yes, you got shut out and you got skunked. But let's just play it safe. And let's not do anything too radical. And yet Jesus comes on the scene and says something really, really radical. You've been fishing all night. You're exhausted. Your boats are empty. You're ready to quit. But I want you to launch out into the deep. I want you to take a risk. Now this week... I'm really believing that God is going to give you an opportunity to take some risks. To do something that you've never done before. And guess what? It's not my responsibility to tell you what risk to take. The Holy Spirit, I believe, is going to give you a a, a beautiful opportunity where you can either settle in and camp out and play safe Or as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you can launch out and take a risk and do something that you've never done before. It may be at Publix. It may be on the job. It may be in the airplane. It may be wherever you are. But I believe that the Spirit of God wants all of us as disciples to be willing to take the risk and not live in the ordinary. Now, I know it's back to school. So I'm going to take it easy on you today. I'm only going to give you a few little points that I believe are going to help you to discover what happens when we take risks. And by the way, uh, Tammy, I have four kids. Uh, uh, When the kids went back to school, we sang the song, it's the most wonderful time of the year. (laughs) And it is. So I'm going to take it easy on you today. And I'm going to give you what I believe are, are quick benefits of launching. I call them the nine benefits of launching. What happens when you and I take risks for the kingdom of God? If you're still with me, let me hear a big amen. Number one, first thing that happens when you take risk and you launch is you discover the hopelessness of emptiness. Mm. 
I hope you and I realize today that whatever you're hoping for is really not going to fill you. If you're a fisherman, a big fish is great for Facebook, but it's really not going to fill you. Whatever you are searching for is not the thing that is going to bring you fulfillment. When you launch, you discover the hopelessness of emptiness. Have you ever been empty? Where you hit a wall and you're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to turn to. I've been fishing all night. I've tried everything I know to do. I've tried worms. I've tried lures. I've tried fresh bait. And I've caught nothing. There is power when you and I come to a place of emptiness. Because it helps you and I to discover that the things that we are looking for, the things that we are fishing for, are really not going to fulfill us. That job you're looking for is great. It's not going to fill you. The promotion you're looking for is great. It's not going to bring you fulfillment. The new car that you're hoping for, the new truck you're hoping for, the new kitchen you're hoping for, whatever it is, I want you to understand today that those things, full, filled boats, don't fill us. And there is power when you and I come to a place of emptiness because it points us to the one who really can fill us, and that is Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus came on the scene and said, I have come that you will have Life and life to the full. Jesus Christ is really the only one who will bring you to true fulfillment. Can I get an amen? So if you are in a place of emptiness, you're in a great place. Because it reveals to you that emptiness is really hopelessness. We need to be filled by the only one who will fill us. Can, can I get an Amen. Number two, the lesson you learned from launching is that you will conquer personal fears and limits. There are some people here today, fear is dominating you. It's controlling you. It is keeping you in the shallow. And when you decide to launch and to become a disciple, suddenly the fears that keep you controlled and contained are broken because you finally realize that you can trust God when he tells you to launch out of the deep. Some of you here today, you're, you're, you're controlled by fear, and it keeps you in the shallow. One of the great benefits of launching is that when you launch, fears are eliminated. A couple years ago, I was here at, the, here at the church, and I was meeting with the staff. We were coming up with some ideas for a sermon. And we came up with a series called uh, Fearlessness. And well, I was going to preach about fearlessness. And so I was asking for some ideas. And one of them said, it was Raphael at the time, he said, Pastor Scott, uh, let's talk about some of the fears we have. Some people were fear to sw afraid of, of swimming. Some people were afraid of sh sharks. They all, all kinds of different ways that people were afraid of. And one of them said skydiving. And Raphael said, hey, that's a great idea. We need to get someone to skydive. I said, that is a good idea. Who do you think ought to do it, Raphael? And Raphael said, you, Pastor Scott. <laughs> so without hesitation, I said, that's a great idea. And the very day we booked an opportunity for me to go to DeLand and skydive. God is my witness. On Tuesday morning, I'm driving down I-4, and I thought, you know what? I forgot something really important. I forgot to tell Tammy that I'm going skydiving today. <laughs> I got on the phone. I said, honey, I know that I overlook a lot of things sometimes, but this is a really big one. She said, what are you doing today? I said, honey, I'm jumping from a plane 10,000 feet. And her next question is, have you paid our life insurance? <laughs> It was pretty cool. I made Raphael go with me. And he filmed the whole thing. My point is this. 
Sometimes you got to do something that you've never done before. And when you do step out and you launch, that spirit of fear is broken. And by the way, do you know that fear is a spirit? Faith is a spirit, and so is fear. And I pray today that if you will make a decision to be a disciple and launch and live in the deep, when you step out, fears will be broken by your faith. Can I get an amen? amen. Number three, real quickly, we've got to move. First thing is you discover the hopelessness of emptiness. Number two, you conquer personal fears. Number three, you break the power of comfort and complacency. I find out that the older I get, the more I like comfort. Are y'all with me? I got to have my pajamas. I got to have my, I got to have my, what do you call the things you put on your feet when you, slippers. Thank you, Bruce. Bruce got a pair of slippers. I got my slippers. I got my pajamas. I got to have my water next to, I just, next to my bed when I sleep. I got to have comfort. How many know that when you follow Jesus Christ, comfort is not in his game plan? And comfort is not always good. I think for some of us, it's time to get out of our lazy boy and quit being so comfortable and begin to live a life that's on the edge, in the deep, living for God, doing what God calls us to do. Number four, when you launch in the deep, you learn a little bit about yourself and you see the impact that you can have. When you obey God and live in the deep, you learn about yourself. And you realize that you can make an impact. You can make a difference. You matter. God needs you. Instead, we shy away and we're, comfort, we're comfortable in the shallow. We don't think that we can make a difference. But when you launch out, you step out in faith and you realize that your life matters and you can make a difference. It's called the ripple effect. You step out and the ripple impact begins to impact people around you. You matter today. God needs you today. Your life matters. Live on the edge. Launch out. Don't get comfortable. Realize that God can use you and you can make a difference. Number five, when you launch out in the deep, I love this, you create an opportunity for God to shine. You create an opportunity for God to shine. This is not about you. This is about God. And when you step out into the deep, you create a culture where God can shine. How many know we live in a dark world? It's dark. A lot of people complaining. A lot of people upset. Half the country feels one way, the other half feels the other way, and I've never sensed more division in all my life. But guess what? Instead of cursing the darkness, I'm going to light a candle. And I'm going to say, God, help me to live like this. Help me to launch out in the deep. God, use me in any way you can. I love what, what, what Mother Teresa said. You can't do everything, but you can do something. And when you do something, that makes a difference. And when you do something, God gets the glory. Bellow Community Church, it's begin, this is the time we need to begin to shine. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, do good works so that people will see your good works and they will glorify God. You see, when you launch out into the deep, you begin to discover that you can make a difference and God gets all the glory. Can I get an amen? amen. Number six, we've got to move quickly. Bruce, go, go to the keyboard. Number six, I love this one. When you launch out in the deep... You develop a desire and a heart to simply obey. Everyone say that word obey. obey. Simply obey. I loved it when my kids used to obey. <laughs> Got four kids. Didn't happen often. But when they obeyed, I felt like I, I, I heard angels. The hallelujah chorus was resonating in heaven. Austin, pick up your underwear. He did. Hallelujah. Aaron, quit hitting your sister. Hallelujah. It was fantastic. Didn't happen much, but when it did, it was beautiful. I love this story. 
Because Jesus says, you've been out all night. You're tired. You're exhausted. And I'm going to ask you to do something you've never done before. Go back out and launch out into the deep. And their response was, yes, sir. See, we need more people like that. I think if God would ask us to do that, I think some of us would want to debate him and negotiate. Get a lawyer and kind of work things out. My people call your people. We'll come up with a contract. And, no, that's not what disciples do. Are you all with me today? Disciples say, yes, sir. I don't understand this. I don't like this. I'm tired. I'm grumpy. I don't have any fish in the boat. But because you say so, I'll obey. And just when you get excited when your kids obey, guess what? God gets even more excited when we obey. We was with Heidi this week for a couple hours. And as a grandparent, I was just so proud when Heidi obeyed. Heidi, can you say thank you? Thank you. Oh, look at me. I'm a great grandparent. Think about it. God delights when we obey. Let's not debate. Let's not argue. Let's not come up with the reasons why we don't want to be nice to somebody at Publix. Let's just obey. Because you say so, I will. That's what happens when you launch. You develop. It's called muscle memory. You obey once, the muscle. You obey again, the muscle memory. Again, and it becomes natural. Doesn't matter how old you are. We need to develop muscle memory. And when God asks us to launch, we do it. And we do it quickly. And we do it without complaining. Can I get an amen? Number seven, quickly, when you launch out, your trust in God grows stronger. You see God deliver, and it builds trust in you. And you want to trust more. Number eight, when you launch out, you expand your horizon in your territory. You expand. Here's the only scripture I'm going to share today. First Corinthians chapter, uh, uh, First Chronicles chapter four, verse nine. This is a story of Jabez. I love this. Look at Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez, saying, "I gave birth to him in pain." And Jabez cried out to the Lord God of Israel, "Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory." Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And look with those last four words. And God granted his request. Wow. I love that. God, expand my territory. God, help me to move out of the shallow into the deep. That's what happens when you launch. God expands your territory. And then number nine, as we close. When you launch... Your priorities change. Now, what do I mean by that? Those guys had empty boats. They obeyed. They went out and they caught so much fish that the boat started to sink. That's my prayer. I want to see that. I want to be a part of that one day, Lord. Let me go fishing and the boat sinks because there's so much fish. That's my dream as a fisherman. So they get the boats on shore, and you would have thought they'd have put their phones and they'd start taking pictures to put on Facebook. No. You know what happened? They pulled the boats on shore, and the Bible says they left the boats and they followed Jesus. The very thing they were seeking, they left to follow Jesus. You see, when you live a life of launching into the deep, your priorities change. And the thing that you are seeking, when you get it, it won't mean that much. Because your heart's changing. And you're willing to leave, think about this, a boat full of fish to follow Jesus and become a fisher of men. I pray this week in a little way that you will launch and do something you've never done before and trust God. And when you do, 
you will see that he will always be there with you to empower you to do what you've never done before. Would you stand up across the auditorium today? I'm going to pray for you. Pastor Scott, I like things just the way they are. I'm comfortable. Feels good. I'm in, a, I'm in the zone. Really? Let me know how that's working for you. God's a God that's always pulling us out of our zone, out of our comfort area, out of our complacency to do things we've never done before. Not to stay in the shallow, but to live in the deep. You know, when you live in the deep, you don't know what's below you. Could be jaws down there. If you don't know what's down there, it forces you to look up. Say, God, I trust you. I need you. I'm in the deep. I've never done this before. Never jumped out of a plane at 10,000 feet. I remember jumping. I, the guy was with me, and I, I said, are we connected? He said, yes. I said, are we connected? He said, yes. I asked him one more time, are we connected? Yes. Then I jumped. It's crazy. It's amazing. Don't have to do that again. (laughs) Thank God. But it taught me something. Good things happen when you do things you've never done before. Let's pray. Father, we want to follow you. We want to be fulfilled. God, we know that a boat filled with fish is not going to fulfill us. A new job, a new house, a new relationship is not going to fill us. Only you can do that. So, Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you'll help us. Give us the wisdom and the strength and the courage to do things we've never done before and to follow you and to leave the things that were once important to us, to leave them to follow you. And that way we will find true life, abundant life, life to the full. We yearn for that and we want that today. Give your people courage and strength and power to do what they've never done before, to launch into the deep. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. We'll see you next week.